Tabitha. Wow, it feels like just yesterday that we all started this class together. We've come so far together. It seems like just yesterday I had just spoken to you guys about my significant individual and now I'm here talking to you about my portfolio. Today I'd like to go over with you my ideas, my humor, and what I've learned this quarter. My ideas are more like inventions. I couldn't think of what to say for ideas because I didn't really know what an idea was. Is it just a thought or is it an invention? Is it, it could be really anything. So when I thought of ideas, I thought of inventions. What would be cool to make? What would be, what would be cool to invent for the future or for science? So let me get to that. To pick apart the brain, a few ideas that I wrote that I thought were kind of cool and creative would be laundry detergent that hooks into the washer and loads itself with every load so you never have to measure out laundry detergent again. When the alarm goes off, then you need more. Eye drops that can change the color of your eyes or pupils so you'll never need colored contacts. A remote that records brain waves and knows what others are thinking from far away. <laughs> Eye contacts that are seen through like a computer screen. You can think something and then look it up and show it through your eyes so nobody knows that you're actually not very smart. <laughs> a carpet that vacuums itself. When dirt sits on the carpet, you can push a button and tiny pipes underneath the carpet will suck all the, the dirt down and release it outdoors. Nail polish that makes your nails immediately grow half an inch so you can cut them down to the size you want and there will be no need for fake nails. A website that can find a song just by humming or singing the song to the computer or the words in the song, not just the song name. Because I always have the toughest time finding songs on iTunes because I don't know the name of the song. So I figure if I could just hum the melody or you know say a few of the words, it would be a lot easier to find the songs. Shoes with built-in warmers that are able to be plugged into charge. Great for winter when it's snowing out. A remote control that dims the windows when the sun is super bright and you're trying to read. You can push a button and your windows will automatically dim for you, but you don't actually have to pull the curtains or shut the blinds and block the view. An alarm built into your house that detects tornadoes, tsunamis, or storms. Gives a warning early on to the residents so people can get out without actually having to watch the news or listen to the radio. So those were a few of my ideas that I had. Um, I had 25, but I only read you probably 12. I would like to now go over some of my humor, maybe read you one of the stories in here because they're a bit long. When trying to come up with a humor story to tell all of you, I was dumbstruck. I couldn't think of one story that would be the least, least bit amusing. I thought to myself, man, I'm, not just, I'm just not very funny. I was sitting at home watching television on my couch with my boyfriend. I looked down and saw a huge burn in the front of the suede couch. I giggled to myself because it brought back memories of a day when I did something so stupid that it could have burned down the whole entire house. It was late summer and Jeremy, Jeremy and I, Jeremy's my boyfriend, were watching TV. I was spraying my arm and my hand with a perfume bottle, just messing around. I love the smell of pink sugar in the summer. It being so sweet and warm, it reminds me of cotton candy from the Puyallup Fair. I set the bottle down and started playing with a lighter. As I'm sure you know, perfume is very flammable. My hand went up in flames. I started shaking my hand violently trying to get the flame out when the couch grabbed onto the flame and the couch went up in flames in the front. My boyfriend just stood there, dumbstruck, dumbfounded, like what is going on here? And I started laughing, trying to get it out, like awkwardly, what is going on, I'm so sorry. We had just been dating a few months, so this was kind of a bad turn for our relationship. <laughs> he watched in amazement. It happened so fast, I don't even think he knew what was going on. I felt so dumb and offered to pay for the couch to be reupholstered. He said no, accidents happened. But we had to leave the house all the same because he couldn't smell the, the smell of the burnt suede. <laughs> if only the disaster stopped there. A couple months later, about a week before Halloween, Jeremy and I were carving pumpkins. We saved all the seeds and guts because I love roasted pumpkin seeds. When I woke up in the morning, there was a huge garbage bag full of pumpkin guts and seeds sitting next to the sink. 
I called him and asked him if I could situate them or take them apart in the sink and put the guts down the garbage disposal. He said yes, as long as you put a little down at a time so that it doesn't get clogged. Well, somehow it did get clogged and he wouldn't answer his phone. So I ran to the bathroom and got a plunger and started plunging the sink. But when he got home, the sink was still overflowing. And he said, what happened? I said, well, it clogged, so I started plunging it with a plunger. And he said, you can't plunge a sink with a plunger. So he goes under the house and starts looking at all the pipes, trying to figure out how to get the pipes to release all the pumpkin guts. When I start doing laundry. The laundry room is right behind the kitchen, and the pipes are connected. So then, the laundry, in the laundry room, the water started billowing out of the washer machine onto the floor, overflowed into the kitchen, and water logged his whole kitchen floor for like five feet in. <laughs> I guess it's good that he's a handyman, or else I would have cost him a lot of money. So that's my humorous story. It's called Disaster Girlfriend. And then my other one, I'll kind of shorten it a little bit because it's a little long too. It's called A Night to Remember. One night, my boyfriend and I decided to have people over to hang out. We were all having a good time, had a few drinks. I excused myself to the restroom. When I tried to flush, the toilet would just keep filling with water. I looked everywhere. There was no plunger. I mean, who in their right mind doesn't have a plunger in the bathroom? <laughs> I looked everywhere. I paced around the room, looked underneath the sink, no plunger. Finally, I worked up the courage to go outside and ask my boyfriend for the plunger in front of everyone. I couldn't, so I asked him to come to the bathroom with me and shut the door behind him. I yelled, where is the fucking plunger? Oh. <laughs> I looked at the toilet seat and he wailed out in laughter. My cheeks blushed in humiliation. I was horrified. I asked, what's so funny? It's like you've never clogged a toilet before? He just started laughing harder. Finally, his boisterous laughing came to an end. He was able to tell me the toilet was supposed to be uncloggable when he bought it from Home Depot. Oh. This just added to my shame. Luckily, he had a plunger out in the garage, so he went and got it and handed it to me through the window so I wouldn't have to suffer any more humiliation. <laughs> we still laugh about how I clogged the uncloggable toilet to this day. It's a story I doubt he will ever let me live down. <laughs> and then lastly, I would like to talk to you guys about what I've learned this quarter. <clears throat> and then if we have time, I have a poem that I'd like to read you guys that I found that was really inspirational. It's in my um, readings for the weeks. When I started this class, I was extremely worried about getting all the work done that would be required for completion. I've always been a bit stage fright, even though I sing in choir for the last seven years. When you're singing on stage with multiple people, it's easy to cover your mistakes. But when you're, when you're talking in front of people alone, it's very easy for everyone to hear the mistakes you say. This class made it possible for me to come out of my shell make mistakes, and be able to laugh about them. It made me realize that everyone, gave a, everyone in speech class gave speeches and made mistakes too, which made me feel comfortable. When I gave my first speech, I was so nervous that my palms were sweating, I was shaking, I was so nervous, and now I'm not. By the time I delivered my fifth speech, I was so comfortable that I got nothing more than a few loose, loose butterflies when I came up here to give my speech to you guys. This class has helped me to prepare for life. It has taught me many things that I will carry on with me forever. This quarter has been a struggle to say the least. I have felt more humiliation and anxiety than ever before, but in all honesty, I'm a better person because of it. In the end, I am thankful that I took this class. The tips, techniques, and advice will stay with me for the rest of my life. So that was just something I wanted to write about this quarter. It's really helped me become the person I am now. I was so afraid to get up in front of people, so afraid of what others would think about me if I made a mistake. But now I realize if I make a mistake, everyone's just going to laugh if I laugh too. So thank you all for being in class with me this quarter. It's been a great quarter. I've learned from all of you. I hope that you've learned from me too. I've gone over my ideas, my humor, and what I've learned this quarter. No, I wanted to share an inspirational quote with you, leave you with this quote today. Nobody can go back and start a new beginning, but anyone can start today and make a new ending.